Hi, welcome back to my dining room. I'm Annie from Champagne Chaos. I do DIYs around here and then share them with you and how I did them. So today we're talking about the coffered ceiling, which you cannot see because I can't get the angle right. But that's the ceiling we're talking about today. It might be one of my most critiqued projects to date that until I post about the stairs, but it's relatively straightforward. So this should be quick and to the point. The part that probably took the longest was coming up with the design of it, figuring out how wide I wanted each beam, how deep I wanted it to go. Um, some people commented that this is actually not a coffered ceiling, that it's called a box beam ceiling. Maybe it's, maybe it's either or, and I'll probably, someone will probably correct me. So I'll learn it soon enough. I wanted the beams to be about six inches wide and three and a quarter inch deep was what I ended up getting. I didn't want them very deep because the ce our ceilings are only nine feet tall, which is tall, but you don't want to lose a lot of that height. I ran one by six boards along the length of the room that were screwed into the ceiling joists. Did not use glue. I try to avoid glue whenever I possibly can because it is it just destroys the drywall. It would destroy the ceiling if it ever, if this ever needed to come down. So I try not to use glue directly onto drywall, but I did screw those one by sixes that ran the length of the room into joists. The one by sixes that ran perpendicular to the long ones, those did not go, they couldn't go into joists obviously because they didn't run across any. So I did, I just nailed them in at an X pattern to kind of grip the ceiling and hold them in place until the next step is when I really secured them. The next step was adding the one by twos turned on their side. And the only reason I did that is because that easily gave me the three inches that I wanted because the, the one by two on its side and then the one by sixes flat gave me three inches. And I added the one by two perpendicular across. I made sure that it spanned the length of the one by sixes that were only nailed into the ceiling. And then they were, I glued and nailed those one by twos to the one by sixes that were screwed into joists. I hope that makes sense. So the one by sixes had the one by twos that were glued and nailed into boards that are screwed into joists. So those one by sixes can't fall down because they were secured. <laughs> this is not making any sense, is it? Um, I, I'm, show, I'm gonna show pictures, hopefully it helps to see what I'm talking about, but that is how I made sure that those one by sixes were not just like hanging out. After I ran the one by twos all the way across the, the perpendicular to the one screwed into the joists. Then I had to run one by twos the opposite way. I tried to use the least amount of lumber as I possibly could because I obviously didn't want the weight. If you don't need the weight, you don't want it up there, right? Above your head and money. You don't want to spend a ton of money on something if you don't need it. So I tried to use minimal amounts of lumber, but you need all the brackets that I need, I put in place. I needed because I needed them to, to nail the baseboards and the crown molding into. Then it was time to add the one by sixes that were gonna be the face of the beams. So I stained them outside. If you can find 12 foot boards, that would be ideal. You could run the whole board across the ceiling and you would have no seams, nothing to worry about. I only found eight foot boards. So I had to connect those to a four foot board to run the, the 12 foot length of the room. So what I ended up doing is I, I beveled, it's called a scarf joint. <laughs> I learned from you all um, commenting on my short, which I really appreciate. It's called a scarf joint, is when you have mitered or beveled. I still am not sure it's beveled. I think it's beveled. That you sandwich on top of each other so that the 45 degrees kind of hug each other and turn into a solid piece. And then that seam is just much easier to cover and sand down and it just goes together like a puzzle. Then I added the one by sixes perpendicular to those. Again, just making sure I always, always, always cut things a little bit longer than what I measure because it's, you obviously can't add material. You can only take it away. Air on the side of going too long and then I trim it down like half a blade width at a time until it's a nice tight snug fit. 
this part was so important to get the, the one by sixes that were the face of the beans flush because that was key to not having really obvious seams. Again, I can't hide them with caulk and wood filler and paint. So I needed them to be as flush as possible, which is difficult because ceilings and walls are not ever perfectly even. I used wood glue and sawdust from all of my cuts and made that little mixture and I stuck it in between all of the seams, let that dry, and then I sanded it down really smooth. It's important to sand it down before you add the baseboards around the inside of the square because you can't get your sander flat if you add the baseboard because I had a little bit of a lip that goes around each square, which I love by the way. And so with that detail, you can't really sand flat once that's up there. Then I added the baseboard. So I took the baseboards, I'm calling them that even though I'm putting them on the ceiling because that is actually what they are. And they are three and a quarter inch tall, which meant that I could cover up the inside of each square and there would be a little quarter inch lip all around the edge. Again, making sure that I cut them a little bit longer than anticipated and then trimmed it down. It, there was a lot of back and forth between the saw and the dining room. Since ceilings are never like perfectly flat, I put, I only put one nail in the middle in case I needed to remove a baseboard until I had all four sides done. And then I could make sure that they went together perfectly, that there wasn't any, you'd be surprised. Sometimes it just wouldn't line up perfectly and I wanted those corners to look really good. So I do a nail in the middle just to hold it in place while I put the other three pieces up as well. And then there were a couple that I had to pull out and it was much easier to pull it out with one nail as opposed to like three or four. Once it was all up there and I knew it fit and what looked great, I nailed it all in. It was going to end after the baseboards, but, but of course I was curious what it would look like with crown inside and I instantly fell in love. It really did take it to another level. did add probably about 150 to 200, 150 to $200 to the project, which is not ideal. It's totally worth it. It adds more value than it cost. Same deal with the crown, cut things a little bit longer than you think you need it. Crown is really tough to cut. I would highly recommend having a couple practice pieces and then using those pieces as your template so that you can, it's hard to wrap your head around what direction to cut it in and how to angle it. And so if you have a template piece to hold up to it, it, at least for me, it helped to see that visual before I made the cut. Just don't wanna waste any of that. Crown is not cheap. Again, I just tacked one up while I put the other. Sometimes the cuts were so nice and tight that I could put them up there without even nailing them in there until I had all four pieces up and secured and then I could nail them. A lot of back and forth. I split it up into a couple of, of days for mental health reasons and it totally paid off. Back to the uneven walls and ceilings, there is screen molding is one of my favorite things to use because it covers up those gaps that are created by uneven walls and ceilings. I stained some screen molding and screen molding you can get in the 12 foot length. So it ran the whole span of the room and it just finishes off the ceiling so nicely. It covers up all the gaps along the ceiling, makes it look clean and perfect. And it was just touching it up with stain. I used a dark walnut stain, tintable stain from Lowe's. I'll put a picture here. I can, I'll link it in the description. You take it up to the counter and they stain it whatever color you want. I stained it to dark walnut. I touched up all the areas that needed stain and then I used wood putty for all the nail holes and I ended up using wood putty in the color ebony. The dark walnut was just a little too light and stood out to me, but ebony because the stain is a little bit darker than the oil-based stains that I've used of the dark walnut, the ebony just fit perfectly. It, it, the nail holes were completely gone. I think that's it. 
The cost of this project was about $675 just for the ceiling alone. Again, I think it adds so much and it's the first thing that you see when you walk in the door. This is the room that you see as soon as you walk in. I'm glad I did it. Did it take a ton of time? Yes. Did I budget for the time and the money? No. I saved money in other ways. I didn't, I just now got a rug six months later. It was worth it. I hope this was helpful. I'll try and put all of the links in the description and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.